Modern Warfare. I enjoyed it so much. Modern Warfare 1, Modern Warfare 2, right? I kind of trailed off around 3, but 1 and 2 were like just so... When I heard they were remaking Modern Warfare, I was like, oh, it's on. It's going to be... It's on. This is going to be great. Rather, the end product ended up being what I thought it would be. That's not the discussion we're having here, okay? <laughs> it was more right. so just the remake that I was excited for, and I was super excited for the for the remake of Modern Warfare. Hello and welcome to level 112 of your Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? What is up? How's your evening going? Uh, it's going pretty good. How about yours? Good, good, good. It is, it is going all right. I'm tired. Did the, did the yard, did some barbecuing, did a bunch of things today. Oh, I and saw so, that. That looked so good. Right, slab of rib, no binder on it, no binder, just, uh, just a couple, a couple of rubs on it. Came out really good. Yeah, I'm glad it looked yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to do another barbecue before the summer's over. And so, down, Agreed. just do. I'll, I'll just do ribs. I feel like ribs are so. I Universal. mean, at least for me, just... people love them. They're so easy to, for me to do now. I know I can. I can get you a good rib, a solid rib in three hours. I can get you a solid rib. We're in and out. Good rib, three hours. Um. So yeah, it's talent. I don't know about that, but I just <laughs> I've done I've done so poorly for so long that I'm able to get my timing down. So that's how I got it going. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we welcome you in. Welcome you all into this level of the pod. For some reason, I can never say we welcome you all in. When I whenever I do it the first take, it's always you all in. Got to get that better. Got we welcome you twister. all in. Yeah, yeah. To this level of the pod. The other day, I was having an issue with uh, she sells she's I'm doing it now. She sells seashells. Just just those four words. I was having a problem. <laughs> uh. Who, but we are, yeah, we uh we're glad to join us for this level of the pod, level one hundred and twelve. Oh, I didn't even Ain't do a one there. I I didn't even do a one twelve reference. Uh I, sh- I should have did that. Any any nineties R and B lovers out there? One twelve. Uh we are gonna talk about R and B. We aren't gonna divulge into other areas of discussion, even though we can if we want to. I mean, you know, whatever, it's our podcast. No, Why instead not? we're gonna we're gonna keep it fixed on the games. That's what we want to talk about it's here. Thinking. There's been a good bit of gaming news that has happened, but we also have our own gaming topics we like to incorporate. Most of most of the time our topics aren't well they can't our topics may be topical, they may be current, but a lot of times they aren't. And that's we like it that way. We're just talking. It's evergreen content, they call it. Evergreen. Yeah, I like, I like, I like that. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to hop into it. As we do. First segment. First discussion. Games we've been playing. Uh, again, I can I can lead with mine. David, if you want to take first, you can. Sure, How are we filling this go around? Let, let's see what you're... Uh, what, what are you playing? Okay, I have been playing two games. This is oh. consistency from me that is that is profound, dare I say, prolific consistency. <laughs> uh, those two games have been EA Sports College Football Twenty Five mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Expeditions Rome. I have stayed upon the path of these two games. I am thoroughly enjoying Expeditions Rome. I am somewhat still enjoying EA Sports College Football. I just had the jankiest kickoff ran back for a touchdown on me um i was trying to beat I, i'm i'm unranked I just quick story i'm unranked mizzou going against number four ranked georgia i'm supposed to lose this game i'm fighting for my life all right mm-hmm. I, I am i am i am fighting my tush off right and i score a touchdown towards the end of the half it's nine seconds left i'm like okay surely nine seconds we did our job we've got the lead we're in georgia L- let's keep the momentum I kick the ball off, the computer receives it, they run, and I I kid you not, David, I tackle, I tackle this buffoon, right? I tackle this mook. His body, I'm going to use the pencil, his body bends down like this, and then he phases through three people and takes it back for a touchdown. What? The computer is going to script. So I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm not supposed to win this game. 
I, I, I quit the game. I simmed the rest of it, and I moved on to the following week. I'm an adult. I ain't got time for this. You're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna mess around with me, okay? If I'm not supposed to win the game, okay, I guess I'm not supposed to win the game. Let's move on. I'm, I'm not gonna do this with your computer. I'm not gonna go for the games. I know you're a game. I'm not going for the games. Okay, <laughs> a game in a game. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it, it's been that. But thoroughly enjoying Expeditions Rome. I think I'm nearly near the end of the Egypt Africa campaign, which is Act Two of the game. Uh, the game has four acts, but basically three. The the fourth act isn't that long. Um, so I want to say that I'm maybe about 50 to 55 percent through this game. The I looked on how long the beat, and it says that well, it takes typically takes you about 40 something hours. I am officially at 42 hours in this game. Oh wow! And I am a little more than halfway through. So here's the thing: I did play. I did have a playthrough before that I didn't finish. That was maybe about five to seven hours of play. So I think that's counting against towards my my total play being higher than everyone else's. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and that and maybe I might have had a couple of times where I forgot the game was running in the background. But otherwise, I'm progressing through that. I will see the end of it. I will see the end of it. And if I do, if I do, this is one of the games of all time in regards to <laughs> me completing it. Because I have sunk... I've I've so far sunk 10 more hours into this game than I did Final Fantasy 16. And by the time the end of Final Fantasy 16 came, I was... I loved it, but I was ready to be done with it. I remember. So... The fact that I'm 40 hours into this and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, but there's so much intrigue and deception and yada, yada, yada. And, oh, I've got a, you know, I've got to fight an army for Cleopatra. They they do, they may, they have a drawing of Cleopatra because you interact with Cleopatra in this game. I mean, you know, the freaking, you know, uh, the chest floats they put on her in the illustration. It's just unnecessary. Like, they, they just, they just, don't, they just don't need to be that size. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, but besides that, let's get through it. All right. Everyone else is drawn much more regular, normal esque. Right. Um, they took some liberties there. But yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing. Those two de- those two games consistently. I'll stick with it. I'm gonna see it to the end. We'll see one to the end. One doesn't really end, but yeah. We'll see. How about yourself? Um quite a few things. So there's a new season in TFT, so it's okay. nice and refreshing again. Um, I don't know what. I'm not really sure what to say. What the theme is this time, because the character traits are kind of all over. Like one okay. of them is about bees, one of them is about fire, one of them's about fairies, one of them is about Uh, it's called Bastion, so it's like upping your defense against the two different types, you know, physical okay. and magic. Yeah. But I, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm liking it. Uh, Apex also started a new season. That is just kind of all over the place. They introduced dual P2020s and dual Mozambiques. So everyone's just okay. running around, splurging them. It's... Mm-hmm quite annoying that sounds like a bad idea it yeah and there's also a new map so not only are they running around with these dual weapons i don't know where anything is Mm -hmm. so but i mean it's still fun having a good time and there's another game i've been playing a bit but i want to talk about that later okay those are what i've been playing okay cool cool well uh you mentioned you have a game that you want to talk about I think it flows into our topic. Flows pretty well. Yeah, I think so, maybe. So uh, I know this topic is yours. Let's 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 flow into it. Alrighty. So what I want to talk about is there's all these like IPs that we like, and there's a bunch of you know listeners that IPs they like, and we mm-hmm. sit here and we wait all these years for these games, mm-hmm. and they never deliver. <laughs> so. We have these other companies or indie developers or whatever. They're like, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. And then they do it. So we we call these spiritual successors, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to talk about. 
Uh, the one game that I've been playing is called Arrow, e, uh, spelled A-E-R-O, and, you know, not like a bow and arrow, Arrow, and mm-hmm. uh, GPX. So it is, it is F-Zero-X is what it is trying to uh, replicate. Okay. And it does a very good job. I've spent two hours on it already, and I know that's my dead zone. Like, if you guys hear me talk about games, I played for two hours, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But I've opened this game up more than once already so i don't think this is the end of it okay i I haven't played all the maps yet or you know levels whatever you want to call them Mm -hmm. race tracks and i'm i'm loving it you know i read some of the reviews before i purchased it i think it was like 15 bucks i think it's in beta there's no multiplayer or anything yet it says it's going to be there Mm -hmm. but uh all the reviews i read were great it just came out i think uh, two days ago, as of this recording. Okay. So, it's really good, and I want to see if there's any spiritual successors that you enjoy or know about that is pretty popular. Um, yes, the most popular one I think is the one I've enjoyed. I've talked about multiple times. I have combined on both platforms, put close to seventy hours in, and that is Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a spiritual successor to Harvest Moon. Um, and for oh, the longest... Yeah. I, I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, for the for the longest, we wanted a Harvest Moon game. We weren't getting them. or And the little ones that they were able to, you know, squeak out uh, was, you know, straight up trash. So uh, the fact that we got Stardew Valley, and it's as good as it is, and as, as deep as as deep as it is, with its relationship mechanics and all the different things like that, um, it's awesome. It's an awesome game. It's an awesome spiritual successor, and it's one of those things where something is such a a, a, a spiritual successor is so good and so competent and so well loved that it it displaces the actual thing it's spiritually successing. Mm-hmm. So now, like, we wanted a harvest, a good Harvest Moon game for so long. Stardew Valley came out. Now Harvest Moon games can't get any leverage because we have Stardew Valley. So now right. everyone that's playing Stardew Valley is like, why would we want Harvest Moon when we have Stardew Valley? It doesn't make any sense. So it's that's what could happen, and I think it's everything's greater for it. Um, Harvest Moon, clearly the people behind that, and Nintendo, whoever owns the IP, clearly can't get their head out of their derriere on that so uh you know it's right. we're gonna rock with stardew valley um you know and, and again i've been loving it and even my partner she started playing it she put 40 50 hours into it easy oh like, wow not even thinking about it like that game is legit it's it's awesome so i'd say stardew valley is for sure one of them i uh i've seen some posts and stuff of somebody like uh sharing stuff from the creator of that game mm-hmm. and he's, it seems like a pretty cool person you know he's trying to keep it as free as much as possible and all these updates and stuff like that and he's just yeah trying to give people something fun to play and i think that's really awesome right yeah well also i'm trying to think that they're coming out with a new game and i forgot it's something based on like a tavern i forgot if it's like a graveyard tavern thing or something it's something like that or maybe like a haunted tavern thing um but they're they're obviously not trying to be just the Stardew Valley developer, right? But, I mean, thank God they actually decided to make Stardew Valley because yeah. who knows what horrors we would be stuck with with Harvest Moon, <laughs> right? And you'll know that this game that's coming out, whatever it is, is at least going to be good quality. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see another one. Back for Blood. Yeah, that one. Didn't hit as well, in my opinion, as the Left 4 Dead series, but I checked today, there, there's 11 people, 1,100 people playing still. Mm-hmm. So, probably averages that throughout the, the day and night, and it's been out for a couple years now. Yeah. You know, and it it did it well. I, I just think they added a little too much stuff, personally. But mm, yeah. still, it it has the Left 4 Dead feel. It has everything they did have, just a bunch of new stuff. Yeah, I think I think that was a pretty decent one. Yeah, I think I couldn't. 
there was just something about it that just didn't catch. I think like they hoped it would. Um, but like you were saying, it seemed to have most of what you would want if you're if you're, you know, coming to it, you know, from Left for Dead, and you want something to kind of scratch that itch. Mm-hmm. It seemed like it would have most of what you want from there. It just didn't hit for some reason. Yeah, it, the the thing I didn't like the most was the uh, the card system. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. I was not a big fan of that. Yeah, I remember that now. You're right. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I think that was the big quarrel for me. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of, I guess missteps, but before the missteps, in regards to spiritual successor, another one. Um, again, I've sunk a bunch of time into sunk a bunch of time into the sequel that has a lot of issues or has had a lot of issues. Is City Skylines? City Skylines is a spiritual successor to Sim City. Um, Sim City 2013 came out. Uh, EA was doing the whole always online DRM thing. The game came out. It was terrible. The implementation was terrible. The size you had to build your city. Every single angle they could take and how they brought back SimCity was the worst decision. <laughs> um, and because of that, it suffered. No one wanted it. City Skylines came out. There were also there was also like Cities XXL and like other city builders that were kind of coming out trying to compete and take its lunch. And City Skylines was... The was winner. crowned the successor. Uh, City Skylines, the first one, yeah, Paradox is going to DLC you to death. That's their MO. They've got to fix that because it's becoming an issue with all their games. Like, your game, you're releasing broken games and already have DLC roadmaps for, like, 50 DLCs planned. Like, we don't need the Sims. We don't need EA Sims here. We just need you to make good games. Um, right. But City Skylines, foundationally, is a great game. Um that did everything that we wanted the new Sim City to do, and it did it way better, and it did it uh, at a much fairer valuation for the customer. Um, since, uh, City Skylines Two, they gotta figure some stuff out, but the first one, that and all its many DLCs are exponentially better than what Sim City could offer now. And again, that's another example of Sim City's dead. Like, like they aren't like right. we don't. If they came out with Sim Cities, people would be like, well, "Why do we need Sim Cities? We have City Skylines." It's the same thing like with Stardew. Uh, it just it just killed the thing it was succeeding spiritually. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I don't have any others for experience wise, but I did just think of if Twisted Metal doesn't come out soon, man, somebody please out there make your own. I will pay for yeah. it. I will play it. I need this. Yeah, man. Twisted. So Twisted Metal is a. I think we established before maybe that it's a it's a PlayStation owned IP, right? Yeah. So it's got to be on. You know, right now Sony is bending it over for big bet for Big Daddy Kratos. So you know, it's either the either. Big Daddy Kratos or Big Daddy Peter Parker slash Miles Morales. Right. That seems to be all it is, right? The, uh, the Peacock everyone else series must... did very well. Yeah. So hopefully they have something. So hopefully PlayStation sees that this IP has some gusto. Let's explore a game. Make it a right. game. The, I, the hope is that they don't give it to some third tier team and say, hey, poop out a Twisted yeah. Metal game and then we get, you know, and it, it kind of messes it up. Um, it, I Did you play the Twisted Metals? I don't recall. I played a couple of them a long time ago. Did, did you ever play Vigilante 8? No. So that was a game that tried to compete with Twisted Metal. There was only the one. Okay. And it it was pretty good. So yeah. I have a feeling somebody out there can do a good job. I mean, I would think so. Because you think of, like, even at the height of Mario Kart, there were all these cart racing games like competition yeah, they were everywhere so it would you would think that someone would be like hey let's we can take twisted metals lunch you know what i'm saying like we can we can take this this space there's not a lot of things here so i don't know hopefully yeah spiritual successor for twisted metal let's make that happen because that feels like that's something that would be fairly accessible for someone you just gotta have the yeah. right people with the right the right right idea i have a uh, i have Great. one one spiritual successor left. I actually have like two, but I'm going to do one more. Okay. Uh, and that's being, and the one I'm choosing to do, I love more than the other game of the other spiritual successor. Uh, so do you remember the true crime games? 
like oh. True Crime, True Crime Streets of LA, True Crime Streets of New York. Do you remember I those? I think so. Okay, um, those were like interesting kind of open worldish GTA ish clone type games, right? The the detectives or well, the protagonists were undercover cops and stuff like that. Um, they were cool, but they weren't great. The, but the spiritual successor to that was one that was going to be based in Hong Kong, but they didn't call it True Crime. They called it Sleeping Dogs. Um, ah, okay. And so Sleeping Dogs, I've said before, is one of my favorite games of all time. I've probably right. played and beat it three or four times. And Sleeping Dogs is the spiritual successor to the True Crime series. I didn't Never play. That. I didn't play New York. I played Streets of L.A. and I really enjoyed what I did play of it. Um, I was just trying to scratch the itch of all those types of games. So you had your GTA, and I feel like True Crime Streets of LA was a little bit in the approximation of like uh, uh, like a like a Dead to Rights and all those other different types of games of the Xbox and PlayStation Play PS2 era. Uh, but Sleeping Dogs, yes, I bought Sleeping Dogs for my for 360. I beat it. I bought Sleeping Dogs for Xbox One. I beat it. I bought Sleeping Dogs for PlayStation, and I beat it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, I don't need to. I don't need to buy it anymore. I I, I see it. On, it's on sale every once in a while, and it's always cheap. It's like three, four dollars. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, should I get Sleeping Dogs? And I'm like, no, because I have Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> uh, like so, three copies. <laughs> so I don't need it. Um, but yeah, that's another one. It's, it's a classic. It's one of my favorite games. I would love to see. I don't want a spiritual success, successor for that. I want a straight up sequel for that. Square, give us Sleeping Dogs. Stop messing around. Okay, you just can't keep printing money off Final Fantasy. You're losing money. Okay, Sleeping Dogs too. You could say they need to wake up. Yes. <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that. Yes, we need more Wei Shen. Uh, but yeah, that, that's it for my uh, for my spiritual successors there. Yeah, me too. Okay. Okay, so what I think. Got? I think uh, we're we're doing a little bit of kind of like it's it's we're talking about games or newer games or somewhere, but I think it's a little bit of a stroll down memory lane type of energy going on here. So and this kind mm-hmm. of fits that too. Okay. So um, it was recently announced, and I think you'll like this a little bit of news. I don't know if you know this or not, but it's been recently announced that one of my favorite developers, Remedy, they're cooking up something nice. And do you know what they're cooking up, David? I'll tell you what they're cooking. The up. Remedy. Yeah, nice, nice, that's nice. <laughs> uh, so Remedy is firmly in production on a on the remakes for Max Payne one and two. I saw that. Now, look, dude, Max Payne one and two for me, that's dude. Honestly, I I to this day I will sometimes throughout my day randomly, random days and random weeks and random years. We'll just think about Max Payne. That's how much I love that game. Dude, that's me just with Mirror's Edge. Yeah, just think about out it. Out of nowhere. Just I just running on the wall. I'm just out here what? we I'm just out here weed whacking. And I'm like, man, that bullet time those people in the garage. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. <laughs> right? I just just randomly hits me. Oh, that's so hilarious. They're firmly in production on a remake of Max Payne 1 and 2. Now we've said before here, we think remakes and reboots are a gimmick. They're just trying to milk money out of customers. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to say that Remedy's going to milk me because that sounds weird. But Remedy's about to get about to get a little bit of money. So uh, I think it's a you know double edged sword. There you go. Yeah, they're doing it for the money, of course, and they know they're going to get some. But it's like also like if you're not going to make me a new one, cool. I'll I'll play a new one that's updated and looks better and plays yeah. better. Oh I'll yeah, take that. And, and just to be able to re-explore that story. You know, explore that story again in a in a different, maybe a different way, more updated graphics, different tools for storytelling. I mean, can you imagine them telling that's the Max Payne story in freaking Unreal Five? It'd probably right. be absolutely stunning. Um, I don't know if that's what they're using. I'm assuming Rem- all of Remedy's games always look amazing. You know, um, now, so I, uh, yeah, I never played the originals. Did it have uh, dialogue and stuff in it, or did you have to just read everything? So what it it was like comic book style, so and so there would be like uh there would be text there you could but someone would narrate it Max Payne would narrate it, okay and then uh it would do like comic book style with like different scenes it was really really cool it was very kind of like a noir detective 
film noirish type of feel to everything. Um, it's just great, man. It was so ahead of its time in regards to storytelling. Well, that's uh, cool, man. Remedy is again they're the, they're the best, one of the best at storytelling. So they're firmly in production on those. They're also in production on Control Two. I'm not sure if you knew that. I did not. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, actually, they're not in production. They're in pre-production. Okay. Um, on Control Two, they're firmly they're in production though. So anyway, remakes. That's that's the that's the topic. Now I think it's very easy to tell by the way I'm talking about it that I am super excited for these Max Payne remakes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my question is, is that has there ever been any remakes that you've been genuinely excited for that you're like, oh, I can't wait. Like, you're like, like they say, we're going to remake this game. And in your mind, you, you, you go, oh, there's my money. Right. Like I had money and then Mm -hmm. they announced the remake and now it's gone. Right. Uh, So have you had that? Do you want a game that's not out yet, or can it be it can released? Be any, it can be any game. Any okay, game. so the biggest remake for me was Resident Evil 2. Okay. So that the original is what started me on that. Mm-hmm. It's what made me open up to horror and all that. Yeah. And I knew I was getting that game. Yeah. And I, I beat it. I loved it. I, I, I was glad. I can 100%. That completely sounds like a, a remake you would be amped for us to. Yeah. And, like, I was very excited for Resident Evil 4 as well. Mm-hmm. And 3. I mean, I have played in Beat 3, but I don't, I don't, I just have not gone back to 4, and I don't know why. Yeah, especially since 4 would be your favorite, right? It, you, like, it was my favorite. Is, yeah, you like 4 more than 2. But maybe it's the idea of, like, when they remade the first one, was it kind of like, oh, this is really cool. Like, oh, this is actually what they're doing. And so then when they announced we're, we're remaking 2, this is this is the one that's like I, arguably the most popular is Resident Evil 2. Maybe mm-hmm. not the best one, but it's like, oh, crap. Here, here we go. Here we go. I got to get, and you know, just the hype for 2 just gets you there because you see what they're doing. You see the potential. You see everything lining up. And it's just kind of like, okay, this is going to be awesome, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah I think... Because the original, I only played it a little bit. I didn't play the crap out of it like I did with 4. Mm-hmm. Like, I played the crap out of 4. I don't even remember how many times I beat it. And with the mercenary thing at the end. And that yeah. was the first game I ever tried to, like, speed run it before I even knew what speed running was. Yeah. So it, that might be the reason. Most people I know that are like somewhat into the Resident Evil games or have like a, an affinity for them, uh, a lot of them seem to have started with two. They started playing two and then they go back and played the first one and then continued on. So mm-hmm. It seems to be like it's kind of almost the same with like people in from software games. Like a lot of people start with Dark Souls and then they go back to Demon Souls and then they continue back on. Is If that kind of makes sense. It, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, Resident Evil. That's a that's a good entry. I was wondering if there was if there was going to be on there. So um, oh, for sure, I have. I'll go with the one that I think is the most that maybe makes the least amount of sense for me, but it's a hundred percent true. I remember being super hyped when they were doing a remake of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now the reason yes. for that is because Call of Duty Modern Warfare was excellent. That is what exploded this game. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Because that was the end of it. Like, people, just because, again, there's a lot of time that's going by. People, when they came up with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the reason it was called Modern Warfare is because it was Modern Warfare. Okay? Prior <laughs> to that, no prior way. to that, yeah, believe this or not, prior to that, all the Call of Duty games were World War II shooters. Okay? So when they announced Modern Warfare, it was like, wait, what? They're going to make a game based in the present day? It was, it was like, it was, it was completely just, you know, is is it's it's prolific, it was unheard of. It's like, what is this magic you're conjuring? Right. Um, and so when I heard that they were remaking Modern Warfare, I enjoyed it so much. Modern Warfare one, Modern Warfare two, right? I kind of trailed off around three, but one and two were like just so. When I heard they were remaking Modern Warfare, I was like, oh, it's on. It's going to be, it's on. This is going to be great. 
rather the end product ended up being what I thought it would be. That's not the discussion we're having here, okay? <laughs> it was more right. so just the remake that I was excited for, and I was super excited for the for the remake of Modern Warfare. I mean, it it was good, but again, they yeah. just added too much stuff to it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even it. It was the same gameplay, but it wasn't the same game. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's like leave leave it alone, man. Yeah. It's insane. That it is the. I completed that. Uh, all the achievements on that game. And For that the was so one? hard. Yeah, the original one. Because I remember one of the achievements was uh the very the very last mission you're like stuck on the plane or whatever mm-hmm. and then just on an expert like you could only get hit like i think it was like twice and like you're dead you had to like flashbang the right people run through and it was yeah so hard on veteran i told the the story i've told the story of how like i got call of duty modern warfare and it came out either the same day or along the same time of the original assassin's creed and i took call of duty back modern warfare back to get assassin's creed well, the game I bought after Assassin's Creed was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I still wanted that game. I just didn't want it more than Assassin's Creed. And I remember bringing back Modern Warfare and just playing, like, I mean, this is back, you know, when I was in the day when I was young and didn't have responsibilities. So I was mm-hmm. able to put dozens of hours in the games a day. And I remember playing that game the whole day. I remember beating the campaign like it was nothing. And I was just running multiplayer the whole time. Um, and so, yeah, when they were like, here comes, we're, re- we're, re- we're remaking it, we're remaking it. And I'm like, it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited for this. And again, it turned out to be a good game. It just wasn't, you're never going to capture the magic of the original, but you know, right. um, it didn't seem like there was much of a attempt to even kind of capture that magic. Though what they came up with was decent enough. It just, you know, was different. Like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another one for me is Silent Hill 2. That's supposed to come out later this year. Yes. When I tried to play the originals, I don't remember if even if it even was two that I tried to play, but I just couldn't. I don't know if I was too young. I just I couldn't find anything. You know, there wasn't really like strategy guides and stuff to, you know, I didn't have my own money to at least buy one. So it was really it was a struggle. I played for like 20 minutes. I said, screw this. So now I'm at least semi competent, so I think I'll be able to play and beat this one hopefully. Because yeah. I love the movies, and as a video game lover that watched movies and series, and they don't really transfer well, mm-hmm. I think going backwards could only be a positive thing. Yeah. Because now I'm yeah, just we'll getting so, to like yeah. the source of the real material. Right. 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 Yeah, you're right, right. You kind of have, like, a different perspective on it all. Yeah. I can see that. that. Yeah, that's that's another one. Okay. Dope, dope, dope. Um, remake. Man, I wish I could... I, get, I wish I had a, one that I knew that was, like, coming out that I really... Well, I just said that I, it's the Max Payne ones besides those. But I'll say that another another remake that I was super excited for was the Mass Effect trilogy. Mass yeah. Effect is Bioware's magnum opus. Okay, no, I am. Corey, con- I am crazy. Con- yeah, I am convinced that Bioware will not make anything better than Mass Effect. Okay, and, <laughs> and, like in their future, they, they just they just won't. Um, and so when they were the fact that they were remaking it, they were going to have the trilogy all together, packaged up, sixty bucks, right? I'm like, oh, this is bet it's going down. Like this is going to be incredible. I remember playing Kotor. Knights of the Old Republic, for you guys that don't know. Um, and I remember playing this, and I'm such a Bioware fanboy, and I remember playing uh, KOTOR, and at one point I was like, man, I wish Bioware would make, like, a space game, but, like, not Star Wars. And then, several years later, they were like, we heard you, here it is. And they they <laughs> dropped Mass Effect with a patented, um, you know, the combat was a little wonky, but with the patented Captain Shepard, all the characters, the dialogue, the romance scenarios, that they've become... 
well known and legendary for right you can romance certain characters and just the world and the mythos and everything they built around it was incredible if it, it feeling like your decisions really mattering you go into two and amping it up even more your decisions feeling like they matter and so you finally get to three you've done all of this and then three tells you hey we're going to end it and guess what your decisions didn't really matter at all <laughs> but it's okay right um just the whole thing was is just a, a great journey so uh, the remake of that i was super excited for um i still have to actually like i want to play some more of it but again it's getting the backlog down down right. i want to make special time and occasion for these certain games and so that's one of them that's good yeah i remember uh you guys were really excited for that one and mm-hmm. it was that was good times yeah i'm pretty sure we even argued about it even though we probably had the same, we probably had felt the exact same about it, but just argued. We're probably both excited for it, but just argued about how we were excited excited for you it. You guys just, just have that ability. It doesn't matter yeah. if you guys were on the same page or not. Mm-hmm. Arguing ensued no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mass Effect Remake definitely was excited for that one. Good. I, I got one more. Yeah. At least that's what's coming out. Hopefully. Okay. So I, I, I was looking through a list of remakes and stuff since you were talking about it. Mm-hmm. And apparently they have one of Splinter Cell. Uh, yes. So yes, I played yes, the yes. crap out of one of the Splinter Cells on PlayStation. It was a dual disc, you know, like Resident Evil 2 had the double open flap thing. And mm-hmm. I don't remember the name of it if it was just splinter cell or had a subtitle game name in it right but i really liked that game yeah so if this thing comes out i'll be looking forward to that sam fisher's coming back they're bringing sam fisher back bringing sam fisher back um at your boy I'll say just for me, the last remake that super excited for that I can't remember now. I feel like it was supposed to be coming out, but not coming out now. That was going to be the remake of Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. I know. Um, uh, that was I've, such a good game. It's it's a great game. I've talked before about how, like, before I was an Assassin's Creed fan, I was a Prince of Persia fan. That's how I became mm-hmm. an Assassin's Creed fan. Um, and Prince and Sands of Time was, like, my favorite Prince of Persia game. And so when they announced the remake, I was like, oh, there goes some of my money. And then they were like, it's it's canceled indefinitely. And I'm like, well, money went back in my pocket. All right. Uh, so, but I don't, I don't know if they've, I don't know if they've kicked up production on it. I can't keep up with all these games and what's happening with I, them. I, there's Just, so much. Yeah. If it pops up one day in the store, I'll get it. But that was the other one I was excited for. Me too. Yeah. Just let us down. Just let us down. The other one I was, well, it's not really a remake. It's a sequel. But it's like a, in a, it's kind of in spirit a remake, I would say. What is is Boulder Gate three, uh, but you know, it's more so of a sequel. It's a three, it's three. right, <laughs> right. Um, when when did two yeah. come out? Ugh. They can do some research because two came out a long time ago. We that, looked. That up. came out last year, right? Yes. Yeah, that came out uh, last year. So let's see, Baldur's Gate 2 came out. Initial release, it says, is 2000. Dang. September 26, 2000. This get, So the game came out before the space-time continuum what? split, and we were put into a simulation. This is pre-simulation, 2000. That is insane. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't understand why there wasn't an uptick in companies doing that. Well, again, this is super old, super, super old school computer RPG. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of grasping of wanting this. The first Boulder's Gate came out in 98. So the second one came out a little less than two years after the first one. And then the third one uh, came out 23 years after that, that one. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, oh, will there be a Baldur's Gate 4? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I mean, uh, I guess I guess Sega is kind of on it because they're supposed to be redoing a couple of their old games that was on Dreamcast, right? They're doing a bunch of remakes, yeah. I so, think 
we got something there at least. Probably Shinobi, I think, is I'm I'm the most hyped for that one of all the remakes they're doing. I know they're doing a crazy taxi remake, and a lot of people are, oh man, crazy taxi is gonna be let me tell you what, man. People I've played Crazy Taxi, original Crazy Taxi. It's fun. If you're thinking that the, this, this new remake is going to be amazing and it's somehow awesome, you are firmly on meth. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what people's affinity for t- Crazy Taxi is like the Golden Eye kind of thing, where it's like you guys hold dude, this high affinity. Of I was games. literally about to bring that up. It's this. It's dude. It's the same thing. It's like what's. It's like what's going on here. It's Crazy Taxi. It's not like anything that you should be asking for a Royal Rumble remake. That's what you should be asking for. But you you don't you don't you don't got the the brain parts for it. I think that's what they call them. You, <laughs> you know the game I heard the most of from Dreamcast was Jet Set Radio. Yes, yes, this is Jet Set Radio, awesome. I think they're actually doing that. That might be one of the remakes they're doing. That would be a very positive thing for them. Yeah, and not and not a crazy taxi. I'll take a. I'll t- let me be honest with you. Or you want to be want to be hundred percent? Want me to be a hundo? This may sound like blasphemy. I'd take a freaking Echo the Dolphin remake before I take a freaking Crazy Taxi. I remake. I I expected that, and that's weird. Yeah, I was like, "There's no way he's gonna bring up the dolphin." At least I'll be underwater swimming, okay, enjoying some crustaceans I mean, or whatever heck dolphins do down there. Just right? imagine how much better the water is gonna look. Oh, the water would look amazing. The water would look so amazing. Well, they I have feel a like little, I'm actually drowning. They have like a little echo location mechanic. That'd be freaking awesome. I mean, just don't make it first person because I don't like first person. Okay, a lot of claustrophobia. I played, I played Subnautica. There's a lot of claustrophobia that happens. When, when <laughs> I don't like that. Keep it third person. I see the whole dolphin. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, with with, uh, with that buttoning up that segment, let's move on to our final thoughts. Near the end, we're going to move on to final thoughts. Ooh. It's going to be a final thought about anything uh, related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, who would like to give their final thought first? Uh, I'll go. Okay. All right. So, in Pokemon Go, you know, it has a thousand Pokemon in it or whatever. You know, it has you have all these regions, right? Yep. So, I've completed my Kanto region pokedex and i'm so close of completing my johto pokedex so this weekend is uh lugia is going to be out okay that's that's one of two that i need and then the other weekends of august is going to be sukun and that's the other pokemon i need so next weekend i'll have that pokedex completed okay so we're getting places. Getting places. We're getting so, places. I'm excited. That, that's my final thought. There you go. There you go. Filling up those Pokedexes. Um, and I'm, I'm, at, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this is much more uh, enjoyable than filling your Pokedex in uh, Pokemon Arceus. You don't have to catch the same Pokemon 35 times. You just can catch it once and you're good to go. Yeah, you catch it once, you're good to go. Unless you okay. want a good one, because most times, the uh, first one ain't the best. <laughs> gotcha. I gotcha. Levels of, uh, yeah, I gotcha. There's levels to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, Let's see here. Final thought. My final thoughts. Um, gaming is in a weird place. We are kind of, uh, that, that's going to be my final thought. I'm going to add more to it. But uh, we kind of <laughs> talked before we started uh, this recording this level that um, Game Informer closed after 33 years. Yeah, that's crazy. And I know there had additionally been a bunch of stuff with, there was stuff, I mean, there's a lot of layoffs happening everywhere, but gaming had a lot of layoffs happening. Um, recently, Bungie is going through some restructuring at Sony. Uh, which is really interesting because they bought them for billions of dollars. They're supposed to be developing and doing some type of IP stuff, uh, doing Marathon, I think. I don't know if they're going to ever stop or wrap development for Destiny. I also think that there's there was talk of possibly a Destiny 3. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, but they're supposed to be working on Destiny and Marathon, and I, I don't know what else. Uh, some people were laid off. Some people got moved to Sony Interactive Entertainment. Um Got it. And obviously, there's a bunch of stuff happening with the with the Microsoft layoffs there, their acquisition of of Activision Blizzard, 
um, them kind of, you know, having a hubbub with their whole thing of not, we, we mentioned before with them increasing their Xbox Game Pass prices, mm-hmm. how they're kind of pricing accessibility out for some people. Um, and that's when they were trying to do the merger and they were talking to the FTC and they're like, wait a minute, you were saying that you were going to make sure that your gaming remained mostly accessible. This merger happens and now you're raising prices and you're pricing people out. Um, so yeah, gaming is in a weird place. And I agree. hopefully the struggle ends. We've got gaming. I mean, you know, we've got gaming personalities left and right that are, I don't know, like, I mean, either like, like I mean, they're, they're diddlers or diddle adjacent. It's just really weird. Everything in the game right now. I, that's, it's, it's really weird. I'm very perplexed about that, you know? Yeah. And like, I, I've seen quite a few, like, uh, TikToks and YouTube videos, but, you know, making fun of uh, people that get big. Like, oh, I have 100,000 followers. Finally, kid time. It's like, what? It's, it's what weird, is here? Where? Man. How? <laughs> I don't get it. Crazy. That's crazy. Someone says I have a hundred thousand subscribers. Kid time. That is the that is, that is, that is insane, man. It's like oh uh, now I won't get in trouble. Yeah, I'm too that's big. insane. Oh man. It's wild out there, man. Gaming it in the world wild. is wild out there. Uh but that's my final thought. It's a good one. It leaves us uh well, we, I guess we're at the end of level 112 or 112 of your thoughts and players podcast. If you like what you heard, subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We're everywhere. Check it out. Apple, Spotify, we all over there. Um, any other place we're probably there too. Um, if you want to follow, like and follow the, the podcast on the socials, we are on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. And then, of course, we're on YouTube where we upload video versions of our podcast every week. If you want to support the pod, there's a couple ways you can do that. One, buy that merch. All you want for Christmas is that Thoughts and Players merch. It's never too early to Christmas shop. Thanks. We got shirts, hats, mugs, other stuff there. Check it out. Spring store. Um, Also, we have a Patreon. If you want to support us, you can subscribe to the podcast. We have three tiers, a two five and seven dollar tier each offering different bits and goodies exclusive content uh updates you'll get to know about the podcast uploading before we put out um our regular posts on social media so you can get there early and check it out um yeah that is it for me david was there anything else you wanted to add please all right well thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level